Hey everybody, we are at YomaCon 2018. It is your Pinoy boy, Pinoy Knight, uh, Carlo de Los Angeles, and I am here with the lovely and talented Wendy Lee, the veteran of all veterans, which by the way, my childhood. Good morning. So, and <laughs> thank you very much for taking time to meet up with us. Um, just wanted to ask you just a, like a lot of questions just based off yourself because a lot of people always try to say like, oh, why don't you ask questions about how to be a voice actor, but they really don't really take the time to really know you. Like, can you tell me about yourself? What makes you Wendy Lee? Oh, wow. That is a huge topic. It's all and, about you. And let me tell you, that is like an actor's favorite question or <laughs> worst question. Um, I don't know what, where to start or what to include, but um, I guess I'm a person that... Uh, craves creativity, thrives for variety. Um, I love being a, a citizen of the world, traveling, um, doing my part to make the planet a little bit better. Um, Work-wise, I try to sort of leave my mark on everything I do and enhance the work and make it even better than, uh, than it was originally. If there's any chance for that, any opportunity, I'm a uh, a stickler for detail. I did, I'm very demanding as a director, <laughs> as anyone will tell you. I, um, but that is always because I'm searching for the very best in everyone, in each relationship and in each experience. And uh, I am very much uh, a friend to animals and nature. And uh, my activism is very important to me. And I hope that uh, I can have any part in making the planet a little bit better before I leave. Cool. Uh, what's a, what is one what is one activi uh, activism thing that you do uh, currently? I'm very involved in uh, animal rights okay. and uh, humane farming. I'm a vegan, so uh, a lifelong. I've been a vegetarian since I was 13. And You're so healthy, too. Uh, thank you. Well, <laughs> it feels great to be healthy. There's there's real benefits from like taking good care of yourself and being a good um caretaker of the planet, even if you just have a, a few potted plants or a little uh, flower garden or, you know, you're involved with recycling or whatever your thing is, there's always a way to participate and to get better at it. And I'm still always learning, mm -hmm. but um, I'm very involved politically and uh, Tuesday is the vote for us. So please vote. It's super important voting. Um, and I'm involved in a, a number of uh, organizations that uh, Focus on those things. Cool. The, when you say you're an act, so you're an animal activist, activist, excuse yes. me. So do you, are you a dog person, cat person, or just entire animal? I would say yes. Yes. <laughs> yes to all. Do you own any animals? I am so in love with uh, my little Russian blue gray, gray kitty. I have a, a real soft spot for that. And I would love to have doggies. I live on a, a property that is very close to the Angeles National Forest. Cool. So there's a ton of coyotes. So have to be very careful about that. So we haven't quite worked out how to have coyotes and not run the risk of the coyotes getting our, our babies. But uh, I have a, a bunch of hummingbird feeders, and I'm very in love with birds. My husband says I'm a bird woman. And um, I really kind of have a connection, I think, with all creatures, with all animals. And I felt it innately and deeply as a child. Actually, animation helped me kind of... Uh, hone in on on acknowledging those feelings because I think personifying animals and in, in animation has made us all love them a little more. Do you? Um, what is the? Uh, I assume you've owned a rescue animal. Before. Oh yes, all of my babies have been rescues. Do you mind telling me a probably a nice story about one of your animals that you've rescued? Oh, there's so many great you know feel good stories. The best ones are on YouTube already, but. I think um, when I found my little kitty, my little black kitty, um, we named her uh, Dahlia after the, the mysterious Hollywood story of the black Dahlia, which is very interesting lore mm -hmm. of old Hollywood. But she was a little, I was coming home from a rap party from, uh, well, let me start over. <laughs> I, I was in a production of Little Shop of Horrors as Audrey. Oh. And I was coming home from the rap party after playing Audrey on stage in Pasadena for, for many months. Yeah. And it was about three or four in the morning, really late. And this little kitty was running around this wall that was uh, kind of an enclosure to the freeway. 
And this baby kitty's running and jumping and terrified. So my friend and I got out of the car and tried to coax her over and really had a hard time. And eventually we ended up getting all these blankets and props from the car and we kind of created a little trap and finally caught her and I thought she was a feral wild cat so I was afraid to <laughs> hold her. I kind of held her out and we ran over to the house and put her in the garage for the night. So I thought, well, at least she's safe. She's not by the freeway. We'll see if anybody's missing her. And in the morning, I went out and I went into the garage, and there was the little baby black dahlia. And I called her over, and she was clearly uh, domestic, and she became my forever baby, and she lived to be 20 years old. That's my little feel-good story for my little black dahlia. She so, was a love. That's adorable. <laughs> I love rescue animals. I have, my dog is a rescue animal. So. What kind of dog? She's a German Shepherd, Rottweiler oh. Shepherd. I can wow, show you a picture she's later. big, right? She is. She's 11 years old, too. <gasps> Fantastic. She's two months in her birthday. I had a German Shepherd that lived to be 16. Really? And boy, that was the love of my life as far as puppy dogs go. Oh. I haven't had another dog since, but I will. I don't know how I'm going to feel when that time comes. Right. I just don't think about it. Well, just keep in mind that dogs and cats and having pets in our lives are our way of practicing the cycles of life and death. And our country is very death phobic and very uh, youth focused. Mm -hmm. So just know when you go through the grieving process, this is a natural thing that we all have to come to terms with. And I tell myself, I've been through it many times losing my little fur babies, but it is practice for when we lose the dearest ones in our families and our lives. So just keep it in perspective that it's healthy and natural to experience life and death. I'm just coming fresh out of the uh, Day of the Dead festivals oh, in uh, Los Angeles. So... I love how the Latin cultures embrace the ancestors and bring them back into their lives annually and that um, we can celebrate that, uh, uh, those people that were important to us and tell the good stories and perpetuate their memories. Reminds you of uh, uh, Disney's Coco or the Book of Life. There you go. Yeah, so exactly. Yes. Um, so just out of curiosity, has there been a time before you owned pets, an animal or two, and then to now, like, have you ever noticed the differences in yourself, just like how you like, perceive life, obviously with the whole death, and how focused we are, like, have you ever noticed that change throughout your life between having, like, not having pets and not having pets? Definitely. As a little girl, we lived in apartments quite a bit. I lived in San Francisco for a while, and... Um, moved around a lot. And when that's happening, it's difficult to have pets. Mm -hmm. And I longed for and begged for uh, a pet. I wanted a kitten or a doggy, and all we could have were little turtles. So we had turtles, we had lizards, we had fish. And uh, I just felt so sad keeping fish in a tiny tank. I'm at a point now where I can't even go to a zoo because I can't handle animals behind bars. It's just I, I understand there's a place for that, but it's very difficult for me to yeah. experience any kind of animal suffering. Uh -huh. So um, I would say I longed for pets my whole life. And once I was about seven or eight, we had our first uh, doggy, and I have never been without a pet since. So, yeah, if you can have them, love them, and spay and neuter. It's so important. Yeah. I wish we could... Spay and neuter our coyotes because they are just overrunning their packs of seven and eight where I live. Um, you own the coyotes? No, no, okay. they're in nature, like, mm -hmm. of course. But I, I keep thinking we need to do something because it's oh, out yeah. of balance. So whenever nature gets out of balance, there's a consequence, and that is they're running into the yards and diving into backyards and stealing dogs and cats. It's a real problem. Swiper, but, no swiping. Yes, <laughs> but back to your your question, yeah. I would say that having the love of an animal in your life is always going to keep your heart open and tender. And I think that's the great lesson that we get from loving things other than just humans. Yeah, I agree. I, there are so many studies about having, just having an animal or someone that's just there for you, like through all the breakups. Yeah, I needed that. Absolutely. Oh. Through breakups, critical. They understand your tears. Yeah. I had a, a kitty who used to come to me when anyone would cry, who would say she was our peacemaker. Cool. If anybody was raising their voices or upset or emotional, she immediately would come and break it up. And it, it was just so endearing to see <laughs> the sensitivity of another spirit that can come in and actually facilitate creating peace. My, my fiance's cats are like the spectrum opposite of my dogs. It's oh. like power struggle and yes. a lot of spring. But, you know, it's just going to happen. It's just how it's going to be, I guess. I just hope you all understand it's the animal activist episode and that uh, yeah. uh, we hope that you are inspired by that, too. The, regarding animals. So, 
Uh, J. Michael Tatum did a panel back in RamenCon 18, June, uh, wow, back in September in RamenCon 2018. And he said something about animals being one of the best actors oh, on stage. Oh, how sweet. So, I'm going to ask you, if you were any of the animals or pets that you have had, who would you like to act as? Oh, being going feline is very natural for me. I think a lot of my characters have a lot of neko neko. They've got, you know, a lot of kitty cat qualities. I think anime really gets that. I mean, how many of us are running around the con wearing ears, kitty ears and tails? I don't mind going feline any time. <laughs> yeah. Is there a specific cat that you have? Oh, um, so you know, probably my little black dahlia. I had a, a little Russian blue called Malika, so I I could personify them no problem nice. anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit more on the personal side, like after all the animals, is there was there anybody? So throughout your entire career, was there anybody you admired? Like someone that you were like, you know, I want to be a voice actor because my current life sucks, but this one person really drove me to where I want to be. And you're like this phenomenal, like veteran, like a childhood um, voice actress. So was there anybody you admired that like got you to this spot? I think all of us have mentors and influences that we admire and respect and look up to. And there's been so many for me. And uh, some of them are animated, some are just actresses, some are uh, humanitarians. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, Jane Fonda was a huge influence of mine. She's gone on to live decades of life, vital and healthy and active and, and involved politically. And she's a huge mentor of mine, or I should say uh, uh, icon of, of mine. I've never had any personal contact. Yeah. Um, but Natalie Wood is one of my favorite actresses, and Vanessa Redgrave, and Isadora Duncan is a dancer, and her philosophies of dance forever and that is how you will follow uh, maintaining your youth throughout life. Mm -hmm. um, Jane Goodall and her work oh, and Goodall. her research and her messages are just so uh, critical uh, in, my, in my approach to activism and engaging with animals and mm -hmm. learning. Um, gosh, so many. Um, <laughs> Tracy Allman for her amazing characters and voices and... Uh, I would love to have had a career like hers of creating sketch comedy and um, SNL characters and actresses and uh, so many people. But um, I think really artistically, Peter Gabriel has had a huge influence on me as a writer and um, certainly as a, a person who has taken his activism and his platform to the next level and has helped so many people with... Um, his association with Amnesty International, mm -hmm. and um, I could continue, but many, many influences. I think we all have several. That's good. And I, have you met? Have you met some of them? Or once in a while, I have. Okay. None of the people that I've mentioned, but there are uh, there are several other people I've had an opportunity to work with or I've engaged with, and. You know, like all of us, when you're around somebody you really admire, you kind of go to Bush and like, hi, you know, I think you're great. You know, I've, I've had it happen many times. So I learned to just get very quiet when I'm around someone that is uh, very important to me. <laughs> just listen. Yes, I Thank advise. Thank you very much. The, um, so are there any just things, that hobbies that you like to do? Like, what do you, what do, you do besides the voice acting? Because a lot of people think that voice actors are just... They do voice actors. You can go to your. You can probably go to your job in pajamas, really. But like a lot of people, just think voice actors do voice acting things. But um, you know, there is. I believe Tatum and Marchi, uh, Jamie Markey do uh, Cool Intentions and podcasts. So I, I didn't know if there's anything that you've done that kind of just not really bleeds into your voice acting per se. But is there anything that you like to do, like to teach? Of course. If we didn't like other things, we'd be boring. <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm, I am. I have a zeal for life. I'm interested in a number of things. Um, the one analogy I'll give you is if you were a construction worker or a bricklayer and you were laboring and working all day, when you came home, bricklaying and construction would be the last thing you'd want to do. So my animated life, my work with post-production and all things voiceover is what I do. That's my day job. And when I go home, in the evenings, I like to get quiet and do anything but that. Uh, take a break from media. I love gardening. I love being in nature. I am. Um, I have a ton of interest: photography, writing, lyricist, um, making music. Um, I'm, I have dreams of creating a, uh, my own YouTube channel, 
And uh, that's coming. It would be the WOW show, Wendy's WOW show, Wendy on the web. We'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. I'm starting to build some of my segments. Um, but yeah, I have. I find that I'm a person that's never bored. I always have interest in just being at home after working so hard all day and having the peace and quiet and serenity of being home with my husband is sort of everything I look forward to every day, the end of the day. Uh, kind of on that off question, do you have kids? Like, are they... I don't. Okay. I have a stepson that I've raised okay. that uh, from another relationship. And um, he's an amazing guy. And in my early career, he used to come with me to my sessions. So my uh, old guard friends know of him very well. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's gone to move on and live in the, in the South. So we always look for opportunities to connect and uh, travel and meet up. What was the... Has there been a time where, like, you had friends and then they came over and they saw you and just like, oh, my God, you're Wendy King Lee. It's so funny. <laughs> you know, all the kids in my family, my nieces and nephews, they're all very unimpressed with the voice actor, Auntie, Auntie Winnie, as they call me, um, or Auntie Wee Wee. And um, <laughs> it's so cute because I've taken a few of them to conventions and they get a little creeped out because they don't know this world and they're... Like, people want your autograph? Why? <laughs> I have to say, though, I did get to impress my uh, my eldest, Emily, one time when we were in a tiny little party up in Mendocino in Northern California in a very small little uh, kind of ag village uh, setting, and uh, we were at a holiday party, and there was a fan at the party who kind of freaked out and got very excited and was asking if... She could uh, talk to me and get an autograph, and my niece was, for the first time, very impressed. So thank you, supporters and fans. <laughs> She's a good person. Trust me. Um, gosh, now I just lost my train of thought here. But is there, would this, I guess, was where, what is the weirdest time that, while you're just walking on the street, that someone just called you out and you're like, it doesn't happen. I have a very incognito existence. It's lovely. I I think that the reason post-production is such a good family for me, such a good home, is I get to have all the privacy of an average life, and I don't get pursued, and I don't get approached very often. In fact, usually when I go to a convention, in the beginning, I can slip into the elevator and go down to the bar and bring a glass of wine back to my room or yeah. hang out and observe <laughs> the cosplayers or um, just be very incognito until I do my first panel. And then it's a little more high profile and then people might notice me in the elevator. Yeah. But I am so grateful for having a, a, a life that includes being a full-time working actor, a director, and casting director, and yet I have all the privacy in the world. I wouldn't do well with a paparazzi or a press shoving cameras in my face or over my fence. It would drive me crazy, and I'm sure I'd end up in a lawsuit because I would push back. <laughs> I was about to ask the difference between an actor and voice actor, but it kind of works out well. There's but, differences, but the truth is we're, we're all actors. You know, yeah. We're creating content and slipping into other character shoes and mm -hmm. uh, kind of examining the human condition and... Uh, all different characteristics and forms of different characters. Regarding the different characters, what is the hardest, if you were to go through all of your, like, um, if you were to go through all your roles, what was the hardest one that you would do that you can do now? I mean, like, what is the hardest one you can channel back to? Hardest character? Like, what do you mean? The most, the diff, like, Tatum, for example, he can't really voice um, his character from or on post high school class. So I didn't know if there's a character that you kind of like wish you could still voice but you can't anymore. Oh, he's just saying that his voice has changed? That yeah, is like, oh, oh, interesting. Yeah. He, I he told us in a panel. Weird. Like, oh, oh, okay. Everybody was sad too. Well, it oh. might be a certain placement in the vocal cords that doesn't yeah. exist for him anymore. Um, you know, he probably started off with a very young voice and as you mature, your voice does change. But the beautiful thing about voice acting that I'm embracing and looking forward to is that in the very beginning of my career, my early, early 20s, my voice was a little higher pitched um, and I could kind of squeeze out those little teeny tiny guys a little easier. Um, and as I my voice matures and changes and gets even deeper, I'm finding I can play more resonant, more sultry, more aged, more characters that have more life and life experience and weathered. And I, I love that. I love that we do get to embrace all places and all stages of life. 
So I haven't experienced that yet. The one thing I would say is a lot of the boy characters I do kind of ride in that resonant kind of difficult place in the, in the chords that can actually cause damage. So I've learned to find placement for those characters that doesn't hurt my voice. Um, and I've actually developed a few different exercises that can help your voice in between takes oh. so you don't actually trash your chords and you can continue to work. Do you, a sub question, do you drink like hot tea, like warm water? Like how do you do to just like, keep your throat healthy and engaged as long as possible? I am a green tea, jasmine green if, prefer if possible. That's my go-to beverage. I would drink jasmine green tea all day long if I could, but I have to cut off about 3 o'clock or don't keep me up at night. That's fair. So I, I assume you've been going a little bit longer than I expected, but this has really been a wonderful conversation, a lot of thank wonderful you. interview. I've learned so much about you, which is great. So. Well, thank you for the unusual questions. They're, yeah. they're questions we usually don't get a chance to go into that prep a little deeper. I just want to make sure that, like I said, a lot of the interviewers, they will, you, want to, you just want to avoid the whole, like, what do you like to do for, you know, like, and it's just, you don't want to be basic. You want to make sure you guys are having a good time. And of course, we would hope you'd like to come back to Michigan sometime in the future. This is my first time. I can't believe how exciting it's been so far. I'm thrilled. I just went from 85 degree weather to what, 35 degree weather. So a little culture uh, adjusting, but really exciting to be here. And all the beautiful fall colors. Dude, we don't have that in Los Angeles, so we're in a semi-arid desert there. So uh, to see all the beautiful golden and red, really red leaves, I'm very excited. Just as a heads up, it's just not that pretty. It's, <laughs> it's so Michigan. pretty right now. That's good. I'm so glad it's you're lovely impressed. to be here. <laughs> um, two more things is, I guess, what is, has, what's been your favorite thing in the concert bar? Well, Enjoy. that's been exciting. Just the surroundings has been so beautiful. And I'm just getting started, but I had my first dance workshop last night. So that was really fun. So it was fun to uh, get up and dance. So let's dance next time I see you. Yeah, please teach me to dance. <laughs> I'm going to get married next time. So I mean, um, just what is what types of dance are you teaching? Oh, well, we Sorry. just did kind of a, a modern kind of, you know, contemporary thing. Okay. But um, I've studied... No twerking. Uh, we, no, not certainly not on camera. Okay. <laughs> I think some of my characters would like to do that, actually. <laughs> so I guess the last thing is, since you are this wonderful, successful veteran, um, for those who are wanting to go to voice acting, if there's anybody who just wants to just get to the place they want to be, what is the most inspiring thing you could tell them just to get to where they want to go? Like, what would you tell someone? Well, I would just say in whatever you pursue in life, to find your passion, to follow your heart, and to trust your gut instincts. Uh, opportunity comes in unusual ways, and to be looking for those opportunities is to be one step ahead. And I always tried to pursue my career staying one step ahead of the competition, of my own expectations, of what my abilities could, could uh, where my abilities could take me. So I would just say, Definitely follow your passion, but have a plan B. Have something that uh, that you're equally interested in or that you also find fulfills you that can support your love for acting because it's expensive to be a, an actor and it's not always a, jo uh, a line of work that has job security. It's, yeah. it's being freelance and that's a very difficult thing for most people. And consider other things. There's a, a number of things in post-production related to acting that can bring you better opportunities in job security. Okay. Post-production has a lot of wonderful positions. It's uh, beyond being involved with the recording aspect. It's really cool. Like it's just it's been so nice to look at your career. Uh, just like I said, because you've been one of my um, my favorite voice actresses to listen to. Thank while you. like my entire middle school, high school, now I'm like awesome. I'm, I'm like 26 years old. My kids used to call me old. My high school kids used to call me old. Take so. it easy on the old. <laughs> um, but they, it's just great because uh, there's like so many voice actors, like you said earlier, that I had, I met, I had the opportunity to get stuck in an elevator with 15 minutes with Billy West. So I mean, that was like, a, that blew my mind a lot. But it's just there's so many people like you guys that it's really like make me feel like I should be able to like follow my heart to make sure I have that passion to pursue anything I really want to do. And the capsule, I would say, follow your heart. That's a great way to end. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Wendy Lee, and I am your Pinoy Boy Pinoy Knight. So, 
This video is thank you to Yobocon 2018 and thank you again to the wonderful Wendy Lee. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you in the next interview.